London is a wonderful place and there's much to see and do as you may have seen in my other videos. Here though are 10 quirky things that you might find in and around London's railway stations. Number 1. Euston and Captain Matthew Flinders and his cat. You've probably rushed in and out of Euston Station many times, but have you stopped to look at the sculptures that decorate the outdoor seating area? A particularly charming one is that of Captain Matthew Flinders and his cat Trim. Back in 1801, Flinders was the first captain to sail all the way around Australia. He realised it was a continent in its own right and suggested that it be named Australia. On a previous voyage, so the story goes, Trim, a small kitten, fell off the ship but managed to swim back and climb on board. I wonder if Trim was a polydactyl cat with correspondingly improved climbing skills. Sailors certainly prized these cats and felt they brought luck to all on board. Look for Trim on the statue outside the station, and if I had a bigger budget, I could make a film about the other statues of Trim in far-flung places, including one sighted in Sydney. Number 2. St Pancras Station, John Betjeman and Poetry I think you cannot fail to agree that St Pancras Station and its accompanying hotel are stunning works of architecture. By the early 1970s, the station, now a Grade 1 listed building, was in poor repair and attempts had been made to demolish the hotel. John Betjeman is credited with playing a major role in the fight for the preservation of these buildings after a failed attempt to save the beautiful Euston Station Arch. So, it's only fitting that a statue by the British sculptor Martin Jennings was placed in the station in 2007, with him looking up at the glorious single-span roof, the largest structure of its kind in the world when it was built. Look out too for the circular discs of Cumbrian slate that surround the route up to the sculpture, with a number of Betjeman's quotations inscribed on them. Imprisoned in a cage of sound, even the trivial seems profound. Number 3, St Pancras Station and the Meeting Place Sculpture. On entering St Pancras Station, you cannot fail to miss the huge statue beneath the station clock called the Meeting Place. Standing 9 metres tall and by the sculptor Paul Day, it shows two people sharing an intimate embrace and was unveiled in 2007. Controversial at the time, it's now become a real focal point on the grand terrace of the station. A year later, a frieze was added to its base, which was also not without controversy, but it's well worth looking at closely, as it contains much humour, as well as some very sad depictions of troops going to and returning from war. Why not spend some time imagining what the images in the panel depict? Remember too, that this is probably the first image of the UK that passengers from abroad will see on alighting from the Eurostar train and going off to explore our great capital city. Number 4. Station Pianos As part of Yamaha's hashtag Platform 88, a number of pianos have been placed in railway stations across the UK. You may not be a concert pianist, but why not just sit down and have a play? You'll regret it if you don't, and you might even draw a crowd. It's free fun, and you can say that you've given a concert in Canary Wharf Tube Station, or one of the many other locations. So don't just walk past, sit down and tickle the ivories for a while. Number 5. King's Cross Station and its vaulted ceiling. The refurbishment of King's Cross Station in 2012 is both imaginative and impressive. If you go into the main entrance of the station, get straight onto the escalator that takes you to the eating area on the mezzanine floor and you'll get a great entrance view of the tree fern shaped roof, one of the largest vaulted structures in the UK. It's best viewed when no one is in front of you on the escalator. Number 6. King's Cross Station and Platform Zero Now this is an unusual number for a platform, though not unique across the rail network. Back in 2010, King's Cross underwent refurbishment and a new longer platform was added adjacent to Platform 1. 
Renumbering all of the platforms seems like an easy thing to do. Just change a few signs, surely. But it's not as simple as that. The signalling system is complex, and this too would need extensive renumbering as well. So in this case, it was just easier to call the new and long platform Platform Zero, also avoiding naming it Platform 12 as it's next to Platform 1. Number 7, King's Cross Station and Harry Potter Platform 9 and 3 quarters. Fans of the Harry Potter books will know in the book King's Cross has the magical platform 9 and 3 quarters, where Harry disappears into a wall to get his train. The real King's Cross 2 has its own platform 9 and 3 quarters, but it's not found between platforms 8 and 9, but in a wall in the main concourse. Not hard to miss, as it's right next to the Harry Potter gift shop. The queues may be long, but it's fun to watch people having their pictures taken at the platform entrance. Number 8. Paddington Station and Paddington Bear All children of my generation, and many other younger ones too now, know Paddington Bear from the popular films. So, why not pay a visit to Paddington Station? And there you can see the delightful Paddington Bear sculpture. Also, near it is the fun Paddington Bear bench, which is made to look like an open book. It looks too good to sit on, but why not do it and take a photograph or two at the same time, perhaps eating a marmalade sandwich. Number 9. Tube Trains and the Seat Maquette Aficionados of the tube system will know that there's more to the seat covers than meets the eye. The tough fabric known as maquette often has a London theme. On this train, the colour of the tube lines are represented in the design. The district being green, the circle line yellow, the Hammersmith and City pink and the Metropolitan line plum. Next time you travel on a tube train, take time to look more closely at the maquette and see what hidden message the designer has placed in the fabric. Number 10. Drive a DLR train. One here for the children, or perhaps the child in almost all of us adults. Sure, you can't really drive a DLR train, but as most of the running is automatic, you can sit right at the front and pretend. There are control consoles there, and you might see one of the DLR train captains operating from that position. They usually sit in the left-hand seat for a better platform view, so to be sure of not being asked to move, get in the right-hand seat. The best way to get the front seat with its excellent driver's eye view is to get to the front of the westerly platform at Tower Gateway. Then wait for a train to come in and empty, and then be the first to get on and grab the front seat. Don't forget whilst you're driving, there's lots to see from the DLR2, and its elevated track gives an excellent view of the area that you're passing through. So, London is a wonderful place to visit with so much to see. I hope you've learned a bit more about the unusual things out there to do and you feel inspired to give some of them a go. We travel down to London by train and used the Rail Easy split ticketing website which found us really cheap ticket combinations and saved us quite a bit of money, so gave us more money to spend once we'd arrived. Anyway, let me know in the comments below how you get on and if you've tried some of the things I've suggested. More quirky London videos to come, enjoy your exploring and most of all, enjoy this great city. <laughs>